Okay, so let's do the first out of four looks. And I decided to, um, since this has a fuzzy packaging, to give this a name. This is Harold. Um, Harold has a bit of short fur and um, he likes to be coped. So I'm this time starting with leather. This was one of the shades that made the look went downhill very, very fast um, in my first impression, besides thorns. And I basically just used this as transition shade and blend this throughout the crease and a bit above. I did the same as in my first impression. I applied an eye primer, I powdered the eye primer as usual. So I did not change anything of that. And for the rest of the looks, I won't change that. I'm now going with Ember over here, which is a warmish brown that has golden specks throughout it, just like, uh, yeah, Thorns was the other one. These tiny glitter specks are supposed to help with the blend. Personally, as I said, I don't need them. I can blend my mattes perfectly fine without them. To be clear, um, if the matte is shitty, all those glitter specks do not help. And even though you can clearly see the glitter in the pan, there is literally nothing while applying. I think this is a bit, um, a bit confusing and misleading in my opinion. Maybe somebody wants to have this kind of shade to wear it all over the lid with the tiniest amount of glitter because let me just show you that up close. I hope you can see this, but I actually like the way the gold flecks are just sitting in this shade, but they blend away. So it doesn't matter if they are here or not. I want to incorporate the mulberry shade. And this is a very interesting shade in my opinion, because this has a sheen to it, but it's not a metallic, but I think it is also not enough to be called a satin. It's a very, very interesting finish. That's why I take my glitter glue and I apply this only on the inner part because I want to let that mulberry sit over here and then just fade into something shimmery. I'm now going into Fireside with the brush that I applied the glitter glue with and I also use that side that is sticky. Pro tip. If you have problems with any type of metallic, apply a glitter glue with a brush and then with that sticky side, apply the shadow. It's amazing. It's like foiled. It looks like liquid. And I apply this starting on the inner part. And I bring this to the center like so. The quality of this fire side is exactly what I personally like because it is not too hard pressed. It is actually really soft. So when you touch it, the pigment is moving. It's like um, you get instantly a dent, but it's not so soft. Like for example, with the gloss guard shadows that as soon as I touched that one, I had a pen. That was a bit too soft, but this is the perfect in the middle shade. I now just flip the brush and I go into the mulberry shade. Yeah. It, it's not satin, it's not metallic, it's something in between that it's interesting. And I apply this on the auto part. Interesting, this applies actually matte. How misleading, again. But I have to say Mulberry was one of the shades that actually from all the mattes in here, or like, I thought it's a satin, all the shades that are not actually shimmers, metallics and glitters, that swatched the best. Like that went on so bothery when I swatched it. So I take some more of Fireside because this is a bit too matte for my liking and I apply this on top, but not all the way through. I wanna maintain this darker outer corner. So I'm now going into Ember again. These specks of glitter are so confusing because they're like, sneezing over the other shades. What the fuck? But I use Ember to line or to press it into the uh, lower lash line. I sometimes forget what I'm saying. And I just want to challenge myself and I go back into Thorns. That was the shade that in my first impression basically destroyed the look because it went on so patchy. Everything went downhill after that. And I used this to blend out Ember on the lower lashes. want to give it a green touch. 
I mean better than yesterday, but I still had problems. So I'm now tapping into Moonlight because this is kind of the only shade that makes sense for the inner corner. And apply this, yeah, obviously in the inner corner. This shade actually applies a bit better than the swatch, but I still need to build that up. Like this is so sheer. I basically went over both sides three or four times now. So this is now the first finished eye look. I insert a up close photo here, or you can also look over on the Instagram because I will post these uh, looks every day. Look one out of four. I still think this palette is not worth it. But now let's head over to the second look. Welcome to the second look. And yes, the headband is back because I was just tired of having foundation in my hair and trying to comb that out. But that is not what we are going to talk about. We are heading into the second look now. And this time I asked on Instagram. And this was one of the suggestions from my friend Danielle from the channel Fedora Beauty. And that is what we are going to do. And we're starting bold on that look again. That means I will start this with crimson, which is the light, uh, <laughs> light. It's the darkest shade in the whole palette, and it's a reddish brown, uh, purple, burgundy oxblood shade, if that is somewhere in the right description line. And I use this and apply this all throughout the crease. Now I'm taking one of those brushes that are a bit like dense, but still fluffy on the top, and I do not have any additional product on it, I just go with that over the edge and blend that shade a bit out so that I don't have a like stripe throughout the crease. It still looks uh, nice and blended. I don't know if you can tell, but I just did this motion just along the edges and everything that this did was rubbing off parts of the eyeshadow here. I'm so close to exploding. So I take a very, very fluffy brush with longer bristles, so they are a bit more flimsy. I tap this very, very light into the pan and go now with that over the edges. I'm already pissed, you know. This has not happened with the other palettes before. Like, why are you playing with us, ABH? I mean, come on. This is one of the worst blends that I ever had. Oh my God. Rescue that, please. You know what? We will rescue. But to save this look, I'm going into Lisa Aldridge Vega palette and I use a uh, French gray. And I go over these edges with French gray just to soften them because it is, it's a patchy horror movie going on in my eyes. Uh, the thing is, this morning I decided to um, put this palette into my extra spreadsheet of makeup that I own because I was like, okay, I, I will not declutter it so soon, but if this is the theme for the next looks, um, this motherfucker is going to be decluttered very, very soon. I mean, just look at this eye. You cannot tell me that this is intended. I blended like 10 minutes now. Maybe five, maybe six, something there in between. Okay, I did my very best. Um, this is this is now what we are going to live with. It's just, no. So back with my trusty glitter glue all over the lid. I'm now going into Midnight, which is the darkest shimmer shade. And I tap this on the outer third, outer corner of the lid. It's not an intense metallic. This is truly just a like um, kind of satin base, but there are some violet specks throughout it. And I decided to bring this to the center too. Lazy shit me flipping the brush, and now I'm heading into the shade Divine. This actually swatched super bad, so let's see how it works on the eyes. And I use this to fill in the rest of the lid. And I work this like on top of the midnight shade to create a gradient. 
I also tap back into midnight and what I do is when I blend two shimmer shades together I do have pigments on both sides of the brush now and now I just tap with one then flip tap with the other tap with one tap with the other and so on until you get a nice uh, gradient effect. So I'm now just having hope that one of my favorite brushes for smudging shadows on the lower lash line this is like a 10 year old BH cosmetic brush. Like I think the red handles are not a thing anymore. And I'm going in with crimson again. Just tap a bit on the brush and then I just start directly on the lower lash line, smudging that along. Hope is restored because this brush is just wonders and I am so mad that I only have one of these. I feel like with this brush I could even use a dried up nail polish as eyeshadow because this will blend it. I feel like this look can benefit from a purple liner so I'm using the shade Vice from the Urban Decay 24 7 pencils. And I apply this on the lower waterline and also on the like upper waterline, but not all the way through, just a bit on the outer parts. By the way, I love these pencils and I'm still bummed that Urban Decay is kind of going out of the German um, market. So no shop at all has these anymore. Like they have the black one left or a brown one, but all the fun colors are poof, they're gone. So for inner corner highlight, I'm going into Moonlight again. It's watched very, very poor because it is super duper sheer and this translates to the eye. So this needs a bit of build up when you want to have it that visible as I have. And I take this as always like a graphic liner moment through the crease. But not all the way through. I just do like the, the first third kind of maximum to the center, not further away. But you know, the thing is just to achieve this intense inner corner, um, I needed like four or five layers. It's, I don't know, maybe it's just not my personal preference. I can see how others do like these very um, more shine through versions of those shades, but I don't. So this is now the second finished look in this video. I do like this, although I have a lot of problems creating it, but still not worth it. So let's head over to the third look. So we're back with look number three with the haunted, demonic, possessed uh, Herald. No, it's the Anastasia for Romans. I mean, you know it. We're in the same video, but for me, it's different days. Today, I want to do something different. I watched a couple videos on Instagram. I just went through the hashtags of the Four Romans palette, ABH Four Romans and all that shit. And then um, I just wanted to get inspired. I feel like I kind of are on the limit of this palette because I did something green, I did something brown golden, and I did something purple. So today I want to do something ethereal. Hopefully that will work out. They do have this quite small um, pencil brush here. And I go into the shade Divine, straight into, coat the brush. And now I look straight forward kind of. And I try to, you know, here is my crease. Slightly above that, I draw like basically around this area like so. I'm super bad at explaining this because in my head I do have a vision already but who knows if that vision can come to life today. And when I'm reaching this outer part I start to apply the shade on the very very outer corner and I drag this slightly angled up, just like as if I would do a liner, but I won't because I will connect these two areas. Just like that. So now that I created the base shape that I'm anticipating, I just go over it for more color. 
and slightly blend that out. I also slightly fill in this outer part, but not too much, just, just a bit. Because we want to focus um, on another shade for the lid. I'm now taking another pencil brush, but this time with no product on. And I just go over this edge so that we get a very nice diffused line. Nothing too harsh. So I'm now filling in the lid with a glitter glue, of course. And I now go straight into Moonlight. I think you can already tell what we are trying to do. We are filling in the whole lid with Moonlight. I also went through the crease with a bit more of Divine because I just applied a Midnight a bit too high and now let's do the under eye area so now we're getting really crazy i'm taking one of those more larger liner brushes that are like straight flat and i tap into crimson you know i used yesterday crimson and it was a big mess with the blending because it went on so fucking patchy but today i press this in the lower lash line just like that and now the hot part <laughs> I look straight forward and then I basically try to do a double line here. So basically just drag this out. That's it. And whatever is left I take on the inner part. But we will go over that with another brush in a minute. Wish me luck to recreate this on the other eye. I'm now using the pencil brush again that I used Divine with. Tap back into Divine. And I just very, very gently blend on the lower lash line underneath the crimson shade. Just the tiniest amount. And very careful around that outer line. So with the tiniest shader brush that I own, I'm now going back into Moonlight and I apply this on the inner corner and connect it basically to the lid area. You know, usually I drag it up through the crease, but not this time. I want to have a continuous um, color from lid to inner corner. And I'm now taking the edge of my brush and I fill in the space between this line from the lower lash line and the divine um, border that I basically drew. And that is now the finished, well, third look for this video, but fourth look in general. And I will put a close up again up here. I like this look. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a pretty look, but I'm also aware of the fact that, first of all, I did not use any of the mattes for this look, so of course it worked because the mattes are the problem in this palette. And this is, again, something that I can achieve with all the other 123 palettes that are sitting in my shelf. So day three, no, day four in general, but day three in this video, still a no. But now, let's head over to the final look for this video. Welcome to the finale of this video, the final look, and that also means you will get my final thoughts on the... No, you know what? I'm not saying it because we're still in the fucking same video. My brain's just fucked. And fucked. In my Instagram comments, somebody wrote that I should recreate the first look that I did. It's like the green halo-ish eye, but with a different primer. And I decided to do this, but I used the same primer. And you know what? Because. That's it. I don't want to change a fucking primer just for a palette. So that's why I will try to recreate my first impression look, but now with the knowledge that I have about the formula. So maybe this will work out better. Usually when I do halo eyes, I start with the darkest shades, but maybe that was a fault last time. So I'm starting with the lightest shade, which is leather. I take a very fluffy brush, tap into leather, and now we do what we need to do and we start blending. And I did the same as last time. That means Milani eyeshadow primer and I set it down with some powder. I'm now taking a small like shader brush, but that is a bit more like fluffy. And I go into thorns and I apply thorns on the outer third and bring this up 
into and slightly above the crease. And I also do the same on the inner third. And what I did is I only coated like this side, not the flat side, but the smaller side. And I also draw it like that. So I have very, very precise application for this shadow. With a pencil brush, I now dip into Twilight, which is the darkest green. And I go on top of that, but even like further out, like Thorns is in this area and Twilight will be just on the outer part and on the most inner part. Because I want to create a gradient into a darker shade like that. If that makes sense what I explain, you know, sometimes explaining what I do is very, very hard since English is not my first language. So please excuse when I kind of explain weird shit to you and you're like, what the fuck is she talking about? Now again, the trusty glitter glue. And someone actually um, messaged me on Instagram like, yeah, the problem is glitter glue and your primer. You should use everything without the primer. These palettes are intended to be used without primer. I don't care what these palettes are intended to because I want to use them the way I use everything else. I do not change my makeup behavior for one single fucking palette. The only reason I change my makeup behavior is when I truly want to change it because I feel like something is off and I will not bow down to a fucking Anastasia Babylon's palette. Now let's head into crown and I apply this in the center of the lid. And since this is a halo eye, I also apply a bit like above the crease so that we have a nice halo-y effect and I like even to go nearly under the brows, but not all the way, just, just a bit. Okay guys, so this is now the final and last look for this video with the Fall Romans palette. This is a recreation of my first impression, if you haven't seen it. Do it because this is a hot mess. I have to admit, this look is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. And as I said that yesterday, or like the look you've seen before, was my favorite. I have to admit that I like this even more. Here you also have a close-up of this look so that you can investigate it further how different this is. And let me just tell you, you know, we have to be honest here. This palette, depending on where you get this, retails for round about 55 to 60 euro. It is a 12 pan palette with jewel tones, with green tones, with a topper shade, with nice smooth glitters, with kind of mattes that do have glitter but they blend away, with satins. It is a mix out of different finishes and in my opinion also a bit a texture mix because shades like Fireside are completely different to smoke. The question is, is this worth it? Is this palette worth spending the money? And I have to say, it is not. I'm sorry. And the problem in this palette are not shades like Smoke or Fireside, not even Moonlight. And this is probably one of the worst like iridescent chromes that I've ever seen because it is so hard pressed and the base is too sheer. It is lacking of pigment, but you can make it work by building this up. But the mattes are the problem. Whatever is mixed, in this formula, leather, thorns, twilight, and crimson. These are the four true mattes. Yes, only four because mulberry is a satin shade, but it has like the tiniest amount of metallic to it, but it's still satin. Ember goes on like a matte, but it has a glitter flux throughout it. And the others are truly matte. I mean, thorns has also a bit of glitter, but they're like, nearly invisible. Whatever they did with these four shades, they fucked up. I don't have even anything to compare this quality to because I never in my life used shades like this. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt the video, but I finally found something I can compare this to. Remember, I did... Did I do this here on YouTube? I don't know, but on my Instagram over there. My friend Danielle from Fedora Beauty, she sent me uh, the Tom Ford Ambrosia and Dark Opulence palettes. 
And these were such a mess to work with because the mats are so patchy. And as soon as you started blending them, they patched away. This is the same as in the ABH one. The problem is, I mean, in this eye look, they went on so fucking nice, but you know what I didn't do? I didn't blend them. And this is where the problem is starting. As soon as you start blending, they kind of, they fall off. And when you blend those darker shades, for example, like crimson, I zoomed in very, very far in, you can see how some of these pigments cannot stick to like the pores. They fell off. As soon as you start blending them, they wipe off and you are left with a patchy, dusty, very, very weird looking application of eyeshadow. I have seen in the meantime other reviews on TikTok, on Instagram and on YouTube too. I'm honest with you, I don't believe them. I don't want to accuse anybody of lying, of course, maybe they truly think this is the best eyeshadow palette they ever use, but some of those I know what they usually love. I'm sorry, but that is a straight up lie. I, I don't get it. Do you lie because you get PR from ABH? Is that? I am so disappointed in this release. It breaks my heart. Harold breaks my heart. Haunted Harold. And even though this look, the last look, they both looked absolutely stunning. And, and I mean, look at this. It is, it, it's a fucking awesome look. I will feel super confident for the rest of the day. But... This is nothing I cannot achieve with something else. And that is the point. To get a look from this palette that looks as good, it takes a lot of effort. And I think we can all agree that although we love makeup here and we take our time and we don't bother getting ready for two hours on special days. Well, in my case, I do this every day, but sometimes, no, you know what? Every time we do this, we don't want to waste time by shitty eyeshadow applications. I think it is quite clear what I want to say. I do not change my mind from the first impression. I think this palette is definitely not worth it. You should not buy this and I wish I didn't buy this too. So if you have this palette, if you couldn't wait, tell me, do you like this? And if you like this, I mean, you as viewer, I believe you because you probably spent your own money on this. If you really like this, please let me know what exactly you like about this and please tell me what else do you use in comparison. Maybe, and that is a thought that I had after the first impression, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe because I'm a snob. Maybe am I an eyeshadow snob? I, I can see how people who have like two, three, or maximum of 10 different palettes maybe don't see this because they don't have enough to compare it with. But just compare this quality with a Natasha Denona palette. Compare it even, and you know, I'm not a fan of them, but with a Pat McGrath matte. The mattes in Mothership um, 10 or 11, we're not talking about the shit color story, but the mattes are good. Compare this with your indie mats, unearthly cosmetics, glaminatrix, whatever else. Like, Colourpop is better than this. I'm sorry, but this is a complete letdown and this is the worst release for me that I have tried this year so far. Don't forget to check out the info box down below because you can see all the looks and some other words that I've written to these looks on my Instagram account, watch some videos on TikTok and of course can support my channel and don't forget to subscribe and that shit because otherwise you would miss a lot of fun shit and I will see you in the next one.